Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Welcome back to another episode of The Good Brothers. I'm Alex, that's Mike. Alex, Mike, Mike, Alex. We are The Good Brothers here to talk about everything. Mike, say hi to the folks. Hi, folks. How you doing, good brother? I'm doing good, doing good. A busy week here. Definitely a busy week. We have a lot of stuff we have to get into. The world of wrestling has come all together. One of the biggest movies of 2019 hits the theater. And, oh, I don't know, a certain friendly neighborhood Spider-Man has joined back to his certain neighborhood. And we hit all that, plus even some early reviews for a huge movie that comes out in just a few months. Good brother, before we all we do all that, it's time to head to the movies. Let's all go to the movies. That's what we have to sing that by anybody who ever asked because we don't have the rights to any other music we have no bro- for anything at all. Good brother, this past weekend we had a few movies that were finally released out and some old movies that have been in the box office. We start up at number one with a brand new movie, Abominable. Open up. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, it was due for a, a a animated film to be number one because we haven't had one in a yep. while, but. Only making twenty million dollars on a seventy-five million dollar budget, so a little of a disparity there. We'll yeah. see if it has any legs upon it. Downton Abbey at number two, Hustlers at number three, It Chapter Two sticking around at number four, Ad Astra at number five, Rambo, Last Blood at number six, Judy, new at number seven. We'll get into that Rambothon in a second. Uh, Good Boys at eight, Lion King at nine, Angel Has Fallen at ten. Hobbs and Shaw finally getting out of the top 10, good brother, and going down to number 11. And somehow at number 12, I want to bring this up, Friends 25th Anniversary have found a way to make a million dollars. Is that even a th- – is that a theaters. movie? Yeah, I guess it was like a documentary oh, thing that okay, came out. Yeah. But yeah, made a million dollars. Surprised it didn't do better. Did you think Rambo and its uh, last week being at number three – in, and now in its second week, dropping all the way to number six, Ad Astra, It Chapter 2, Hustlers, Downton Abbey, and Abomino all make more money than it. I think it comes down to it. It's just, I know the excuse is it's Ram movie, I get it. But the problem is people aren't paying for those. that kind of diehard community is obviously not paying for this kind of movie. So those are the movies you probably should put on Netflix, honestly. Because I, like they didn't come out for this. So whoever was that diehard Ram fan, they did, but... There's not enough then mm. to you know justify. It's not a Rocky franchise, I guess, is what I'm saying. So I think it's a bit weird to think like it was going to do any better. I think what also hurts it is not only an animated movie coming out, not only the curiousness of it, it's in Halloween, Hustlers actually being critically very well, and having all these big names in pop culture, I think sells a lot better than a guy that we tend to connect with more Republican right-sidedness. So you already lost an audience. Like People are biased like that. Not us, but people are like, well, we don't like him. He supports this president. I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. This, is an, this is a movie, and I like Rambo. But now as a movie, you're like, well, it's not really that good. I mean, again, John Wick proves you can do good, crazy killing movies and be critical. Right. You know, or critically you know, acclaimed. Right. But I think this skips that, and it's like, well, no, blow up stuff. It's like, well... No, thanks. Maybe Netflix. And it'll be interesting to see where this movie now falls heading into this weekend because we do have such a big opening weekend for certain movies. So we'll get into that in just one second. But all in all, do you are you surprised by anything from this top tier besides Ramble? No, I think we were pretty dead on about what was going to stay, what was going to move a little bit. So why don't we move on to what is coming out this weekend, good brother, for all you to spend your awesome money. One of the most acclaimed movies so far of 2019 has a certified Rotten Tomato score of 79% from big name from the big names when it comes to having that type of uh, clout to promote the movie and to sway the votes. Good brother. Joker comes out this Friday. You and I, along with some other good brothers of the network, will be going to see this movie in its premiere. Super excited about that. Before we get into all that, we also want to just make sure if anybody's interested, there's also some other movies coming out to only no theaters, but the biggest one is Judy that was in the top tier is now getting the awesome expanded. movie. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be a, it's gonna release. get in the theater to get us release, and I believe Amazon Prime will release it then, or so it's one of those. It's a Netflix version of the Irishman where they have to to put it in theaters to watch it, but I'm hearing really good love from that movie so far. Obviously, the woman that was Dorothy, 
Mm-hmm. So I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about it and the singing and the sad story that really is behind that. I hope to do that on Murder Mysteries and more one day. Ooh, yeah. Like maybe a downfall of a celebrity kind of fun That'd be thing. interesting, yeah. Maybe I just got my first inspiration in a while Beagle. here, Mike. Yeah. But that could be fun. So, but, um, yeah, they're just kind of releasing it to get that Oscar attention. Very cool. So that was everything when it came to the box office and what you could spend your money on this coming up weekend. Us. And good, brother, we continue on what's coming out this weekend because it's probably the moment you and I have been talking about the most other than Avengers Endgame. It is finally time. It is upon us. The Clown Prince of Crime has finally arrived. Good, brother. Joker releases this weekend you and i get a chance to go watch it tomorrow night if you're listening to this that is thursday we get a chance with along the great fans and the country to see this movie one of the really early oscar favorites when it comes to a lot of different categories before we get into anything when it comes to the drama the controversy what we think what are you feeling right now because with the last when it comes to tentpole events people know how you feel about the star wars movies and the avengers movies the excitement of those big popcorn movies this one having that niche of a, a beloved comic book character, but the social commentary that comes with it and the expectations of one of your favorite parts of this whole world that we're in, in Oscar season. Yep. What are you feeling about it heading into? I'm into excited because I, I think it's going to live up to the hype. I think it's okay to get your hype up. I like the run, the the time of the movie, only a two hour movie. Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favorite actors ever since I saw Jesus walk the line back then when I was getting into movies. And I'm right. like, this is a film. Like, this is acting. Like, I get it now. Like, no wonder this whole movie and cast got nominated. And the same thing here. And, yeah, we can ignore the drama because we're going to wait to see it if we really think so. Right. So it's kind of hard to talk about it now. Todd Phillips needs to kind of be quiet probably. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But I'm not looking at that. I'm just straight ahead. Let me watch this movie. And then I'll be able to say, you know what? This drama is this and this is this. But until then... What are we going to say about it? You know, like it's a movie. All you can do is acknowledge the fact that there is drama behind it when it comes to social ideas, when it comes to political ideas. But whether or not that's actually being transferred into the movie. See, I think that's a very important thing that you and I, good brother, could explore when it comes to this Joker. Whether Todd Phillips one thing means one thing or another. Same thing with Sylvester Stallone and Rambo. Just because they have certain points of views, it, it depends on whether or not that message comes into that movie. If you watch the Joker and all of a sudden it is a movie that it's about incels yeah. and it is about you know uh, not being socially correct and everything, but in a way that's not – based off of the story, more along the lines of this is just amused to my message, mm-hmm. then yeah, it, it is bec- becomes a part of the story. But if we're talking about a movie that explores these ideas, that's a different take than its message is that. If, if we find out that the Joker is about a man that loses faith with so- uh, society and society does bring him down and it does change him Which into the Joker, what we think is going to happen. We gonna happen then it's the story being told. But like any controversy about the man behind that camera, yeah. when it comes to the director, I don't care about that. The Henry, I get why people get so upset about these stories because we're coming off the Harvey Weinstein thing. And how do you watch certain movies now when you see the Weinstein logo? Yeah. Or then you see, you hear the stuff about... You kind of look past it. You have to. Yeah. You have to be able to take the artist out of the art. But I'm not here to judge a person that yeah. can't do that. What I'm saying is you don't. You cannot judge a movie before you watch the movie. And I, I'm one of those people that I think it's very different between movies and music. Because, yes, I can block off Michael Jackson. I can block off R. Kelly very easily. Because that's a solo artist. And I get there was a lot of people working it, but at the end of the day, solo artist. Oh, you a can movie, stop listening I can stop. I, okay. I have. Okay. I don't listen to my gotcha, gotcha, anymore. Got you, got you. But as a movie, I'm like, well, guys, like, there's, like, that's one little part. Like, we're not even talking about, like, imagine how many people it took to make a song. It takes quadruple that to make a movie, if not more than that even. And it's fine. Like, well, look at Bohemian Rhapsody. Is that, um, sorry, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Robbie Brian Malik? Singer. Oh, Brian Singer. Brian yeah. Singer. Was on to direct, and they removed him pretty early, and that movie went on to get a lot of critical acclaim and win an Oscar. And that guy's a terrible person. X-Men franchise lived on for a very long time, so it's easier to forgive when it's one person and we can remove that one person and be like, no, everything else is still the same. Like These actors agree. They don't like him. That's why he's gone. And it's easier to get behind that than, let's say, a Michael Jackson where it's like, well, we don't have any hard evidence. Well, there's enough little evidence that when you add it up, it's still not an okay person to me. Now, have you – you and I go to premieres all the time, like at least twice a month. And then that's – we sprinkle in the rest of the movies throughout the, the month into that. So we're always at the theater. Has this movie – 
made you worried about safety at all? No. No, right? No. I'm, I I have it in the fourth, forefront. But like, I, 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 I do it at every movie. Same here. Any, yeah. any sort of public gathering, yeah. I'm always looking around like, that guy's kind of weird. Yeah. And then they're looking at me like, that guy's kind of weird. weird too. But that guy has a reason to think you're kind of weird. Yeah, no, I don't blame him yeah, at totally, all. But totally. No, I'm not really worried. I mean, I remember seeing uh, Batman... The Dark Knight, well, Dark Knight Rises, Rises after, uh, after the shooting yeah. and like a week after. Yeah. Because I always said I was opening week. So, no, I'm not too worried as much as I normally am. I'm already very concerned with the public, yeah. which is why we do tend to sit in the upper upper yeah, area. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have an easier escape or just you're in less danger. Sure. And that's just the way you have to look at it going to theaters nowadays. I but mean, I think that's how you have to do it going anywhere in this world now. Well, how many times do you and I, yeah, not just speaking of everyday, like the world, like I, we go to major events all the time, sporting events, we go to yeah. wrestling shows, concerts, things like that. Like we're constantly in public. You and I work in public jobs where we're in front of a lot of crowds all the time. So it is always in the forefront. But getting back to the movie just a little bit, good brother, before we move on, because the next step in the Joker is reviewing it in just about uh, 48 hours. But before we get to do that, let me know right now, what are you picturing in your head? Are you going in there with an open slate? Is this a little different than, let's say, what you did for the Avengers Endgame or another type of superhero movie? Because when you think about it, these type of movies is kind of like a taxi taxi driver or it is kind of like a Kings of Comedy or it is like a Goodfellas where even if you want to be kind of surprised going into it but not the same way as Avengers Endgame I would think because that's more of a spectacle. What I think this one for me at least is I want to know where they go. How do they get there? What is the motive? What is the hype? What was the point of this movie? What was the message it wanted me to leave? Avengers Endgame and this type of drastic worlds and those type of movies, Hobbs and Shaw, it's not meant to do that. It's meant to entertain me for a little mm-hmm. while. So that's what I'm expecting from the Joker. How about you? No, I'm not expecting entertainment. I'm expecting a, a deep dive into yes. a movie. I'm yep. expecting art. Okay. That, like, once upon a time in Hollywood, I didn't go to be only entertained. I went to see something I haven't seen in this form. And that's what I expect from this movie. So you and I are super excited. I know you and I have been talking about this, but stay tuned here on the Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, wherever you find our show, however you follow us, because next week's episode will be a deep dive on the Joker. Good Brother, we move from one comic universe to another. So a few weeks ago, we had as one of the main topics of our show, the split between Sony Studios and the Marvel Disney Studios. Well, Good Brother, literally 12 hours after you and I stopped recording the Good Brothers episode of last week, Spider-Man, Sony, Marvel, a hug and made up. Good Brother, Spider-Man is back in the MCU. They will have one movie that Spider-Man will be in a true MCU movie, and then there will be Spider-Man back into a Sony movie that's produced by MCU, and that's it. So one essentially Avengers movie or crossover, yeah. and one more Spider-Man Which they three. Think would be Doctor Strange. Would be the crossover. Do you movie. think? It, so what do you think? Okay, so now that I, we know- I think you kill him off at this point. I think Sony's gonna they're gonna kill him off. How? I think, you can do it a million ways, dude. There's a million Spider-Man by killing off. No, but ki- by killing off, do you mean they kill Tom Holland, Peter Parker, or do you mean they they kill Spider-Man? Tom Holland's Peter Parker? Because I think Marvel is getting they're getting to a point where like we're gonna do this business now, and we'll be fine for a few years. You're not going to give us Spider-Man back, correct? Okay. So we're in a few years. We're going to take our character. We're going to bring him back. We don't want to do business with you anymore. We, we're getting the X-Men back. We're getting Fantastic Four. We're like, we love Spider-Man. We do. Once Tom Holland's contract's up, we did Spider-Man. You guys don't want to sell him to us. The business, obviously, is not really working out. Okay, have him. Okay, you're not going to sell him. We're going to move on with the MCU without Spider-Man. Yeah, but they're not going to kill him because Sony's still going to want to do movies with them. So they're still going to no, have that, to- Tom Holland's, and that's the other part. Tom Holland's already basically said once his contract is done, he's not resigning. Well, well okay, that's maybe what he's saying now, but we don't know what- Okay, yes, eventually if there's this buco business but- and they're like, no, we'll do business or we'll sell. But if basically it's on this, like, here's the Hollywood talk. Here's for all the normal people out there. They're doing the movies. They're getting along now. They're going to make the money. If- Disney's option is this. You sell us Spider-Man. We're not going to split him anymore. Sony has to agree to either sell him or not split him. If they don't split him, they're not doing business anymore. In that case, Tom Holland is out as Spider-Man. He won't re-sign as Spider-Man, and he'll be done with it. Dude. And then they can continue on with whichever way they want to approach a Venom, Miles Morales, whatever, and, or bring in a new. They've already established a multiverse in Sony, so now, what does it matter? do you think they get a deal done, though? No. 
I think after this is the last deal. And then I think they're just like, okay, we're done. I don't think Sony got as much. There's not enough money. In this billion dollars we're talking, it's not enough to justify them not being in charge. I get where you're coming from. I I think where I think it becomes a little interesting is I wonder how much control Disney really wants. I wonder how much of this was PR control to just kind of tie up loose ends. I wonder how much of this was just a peace offer and be like, hey, let's get back to the business table and let's work out a multi-film deal. Let's work out a multi-year deal. Let's get this Let's get this done because you know you know what I equate this to, good brother? I equate this to Joe Madden and the Chicago Cubs for all you sports fans. Mm-hmm. While it may have been time to split up, the fact remains is – Marvel is not better without the Sony no. with the without the Spider Man IP, and Sony is not better without the Marvel. Sometimes influence, you just can't reach an agreement, which is fair. And if it happens, it happens. But this is not a case where I think either either team has like we're better off with the without the other. No, you benefit more than almost anybody in the history of filmmaking with this deal. You both have made a lot of money. And here's the thing: you and I, because of the realm we are, we talk about the film side of it and the, that type of business side. But you and I also understand. The social media re- relevancy of it and the merchandise relevancy of it. So as long as both companies are making money in that, Spider Man, Spider Man for the PlayStation Four was a goldmine for Sony. Marvel got a little piece of it because it's still a Marvel property. But think about the investment Sony gets. So maybe they're much more willing to be like, look at as long as you're not bending us over through a barrel, we're willing to work with you, Disney. You know, whether Disney wants that's or a not. great opinion. But here's the problem: that's not the word right now. That's sure. not that's not what we're talking about right now. Right now, the like everything I said, that's out there. Like that's not we're estimating, we're guessing. As of right now, that's the direction we're going. One on uh, one more good movie and a solid trilogy overall. Maybe right. they said it, or maybe they do decide, like, you know what? We're going to pay you that obnoxious amount of money you want for Spider Man. That's how big we think this kid is. We'll give you an obnoxious amount of money where you're like, well, duh, we're not going to say no to that. Like, Sony, there, there is a number. That number exists. Well, I don't know what it is, but I could see Disney one day seeing after this when it's close, they're like, okay, this is what we're really going to offer. And it's going to be like, Five wow. billion dollars, so and they, like but then yeah. remember they get everything. Then the movies, the crossovers, the merchandise, the, every the little games. thing yeah. of Spider Man, and Spider Man's hotter than ever. So yeah. I wouldn't. By that point, a part two will come out to the game, and more cartoons, and more this, and Tom Holland's going to be an even dreamier boat of a human being, probably. But here's the interesting though, like, and we'll move on a little bit because we know we have two kind. We have one more big topic. We have to talk for the awesome groupies of the Good Brothers. But think about this. Sony has so much invested in it. That Spider-Man game is the number one PlayStation game of all time, and this until Last of Us 2's come out. But if that does happen, that game, uh, Spider-Man 3 for the PlayStation wouldn't exist because Sony's done. They're out of the game. Why would they care? That would become a multi-platform game. All of a sudden, that's on Nintendo Switch, on the Xbox, and on on PlayStation. So it becomes a property that becomes even more... You know, huge and Spider Man. Unlike the o- other than Spider Man, maybe Batman and a few other superheroes, Spider Man is the king of video games when it comes to that world. So, very interested to see how that pays off. But you and I will talk a little bit more about what this means and if we find out if he's involved in which movies mm-hmm. and when that release date does come out. Because we know 2021 will be Spider Man three, the final Spider Man movie that is co-produced by both entities, and then we'll see where he comes up in the crossover events. And finally, good brother, before we head out of here, early reviews have came in to one of the most anticipated films. We talk about an anticipated film than a Joker. Inspiration is a word that we hear a lot about the Joker. And one of those key inspirations is Robert De Niro and so many of his characters, who so happens to be in the Joker. And Monscorsese's. And guess what has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes so far, good brother? That's right. The Irishman. I mean... This, they're talking about this being the mob epic of mob epics, the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King of mob movies. I, I mean, it is going to be. And I think we had a good conversation, which was, do you watch this in the theater? And you asked me, and I said, no. I was like, this movie was made for Netflix. Like, it really was. And the only reason it's even going to theaters is for the Oscars. Yeah, the Academies. Yeah. Exactly. Now, here's my thing. If that's what you're into and you want to see that, of course, no judgment. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, for me, a three-and-a-half-hour mob movie mm-hmm. – I'd rather enjoy it and savor it and take four hours to watch it with bathroom breaks and food breaks right. than try to sit there for three and a half hours. Now, you tell me this has an intermission. I might change my you mind. You may consider it. Yeah. If it says, hey, we're going to do like an hour 45, hour 45. I'll be like, damn, Mike, maybe we should go to this. And they'll give us a 20-minute break in between. 
could be legit, but no, I kind of want to enjoy opening night at home. I'll stay up till six in the morning if I have to. And I think it's going to be a fun movie, though. More than anything, I think this is going to be fun. And not in the sense that it's, you know, a, a Fast and the Furious or Jurassic World type of movie, but fun and seeing these guys back in their prime, seeing this type of mob movie, I'm really excited about it, Good Brother. And just the fact that, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think it would be this good when it came to early word of mouth and legit early word of mouth from high reputable places. I thought it would be like admittedly 60s movie, like at 60%. Like some people like it, some people hate it. Yeah, because that's just you anticipate it. And, and it's not, not just anticipation, but it's also – you know, track record, what we've seen from some of these guys recently and kind of where the world of mob movies are and also what we have now taken from television shows and how we love to see these stories drawn out and to see it kind of develop into this and to see that it it's not just a passion project for Scorsese, but he's bringing three legends that he's been so such a big part of their journey and to see it all kind of come full circle. I'm super excited about The Irishman and I know you are too. So all in all, it's going to be an awesome time to see this movie come together but good brother i think that's pretty much it for this episode on next week's episode you and i get a chance to really review and break down what is going to be an epic night of wrestling wrestling on nxt on usa and aew on tnt you and i are uh, super excited about this change chicago will be the mecca of that world in just a couple of months so it's super exciting Last to see the good brothers in about a month yeah so it's super exciting to see where we're all in this together hype level has to be at 10 right good brother 10 easily 10 so, 10 10 but i think that's it good brother time to uh, turn off the lights and uh, turn down the microphones any last thoughts last thoughts for the good brother himself alex mercado adios i'm mike mercado we'll see you on the next episode of the good brothers here on the mercado airwaves network thanks for joining us here on the good brothers here on mercado airwaves Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Went Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Went Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airways by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airways, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airways Network. Mercado Airways is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voiceover work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox. Enjoy our shows? Follow the Mercado Airways crew all over social media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airways. On Instagram, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 2121. Mike is at Mike Mercado 2333. And our true crime show is at Murder Mysteries and more. And on Twitter, Nicole is at Typing Wind Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado 21 Alex. And Mike is at M Mercado 2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airways. Follow our pop culture show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Get us on the go by downloading our programs anywhere you get your favorite podcast, like iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, and other popular sites. Just search us at Mercado Airwaves. While you're at it, please like, rate, review, and share us with your friends. Visit us on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Click the subscribe and like button to get notified every time a new episode or interview is posted. Support Mercado Airways by visiting Patreon.com slash Mercado Airways, the home of our interviews with athletes and celebrities, which you can get ad-free and early before it's released to the public. Come play video games with us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Mercado Airways Network. Mercado Airways is powered by Munch Art Design. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Voiceover work on Mercado Airwaves is performed by Josh Fox.
What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the author I get to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support.